This project for more so is a very supply heavy project. So I've laid out the supplies for my class and I'll show you what they are and how I've organized them. To begin, it's gonna be very messy. So I have plenty of paper towels, have cups with water for the students to clean out their brushes. You're also going to want to have some sort of tablecloth or table covering and a variety of sizes of brushes. So big ones for those large areas and then small ones for the details. You will also need some sort of palette for each student. You can use the plastic ones like this or a disposable paper plate. Because I have eight students in my class, I'm going to be having eight colors. In addition to eight colors, we'll have a bowl and a spoon for each, as well as one textural item. So for each item, I put it into a little Ziploc bag and I've labeled it with what's in it so that the moms and the students all know what it is without me having to tell them. So for each one, we have that. And you can have these items pre-mixed with your paint ahead of time. Or like I'm going to do, I have journeymen. So I'm gonna allow my students to mix their paint and texture items themselves. So each student will have a bowl. They will go ahead and, whoops, let's try another one. Put paint into it. They will take one textural item and use that spoon to add it to it. And then that spoon will also be their stir stick. So because my students are mature enough to try this, I'm gonna let them do their own paints, one per student. If your students are too young, you can also have a mom do this to each color while you're explaining the project to the kids. So after each paint is mixed with one textural item, then you will have a whole buffet of paints for the students to choose from. You can see that I have things like flour, chia seeds, pine needles, eggshells, sand, things like that. I basically went around in my pantry in my yard and simply found things to add to the paint. So use what you have, but be creative, and I'm sure you can find eight things to add. Because we have this nice buffet style of paint, your students can take their palette and they can simply walk around in a line to each um, section and they can spoon the colors that they need onto their palette and they can go through and quickly get that done and then take their paint back to their table. You're going to want to station one mom at the paint buffet to be in charge of refilling the paint. So if you're running out of yellow, that mom will already be there to refill yellow and the coffee grounds, for example, and you can just focus on helping your students at their tables. The last three pages of the lesson plan include three drawings of Morisot's paintings. And for your students and the parents reference, the name of each painting is down in the bottom corner. I've chosen a still life, a portrait, and a seascape. So as you show the students the options of what they're going to be painting, you can quickly throw out those terms. You don't need to teach them, but the more the students hear these words, the more they're going to understand what they mean. Now, the most manly image I could find from Morso is these boats. So you wanna think about who your students are, maybe which picture they might like to have, and try and print out the ones that are best for your class. Now you can see that I've pretty much simplified this image a lot. However, there's still some details and things that might be too difficult for younger students. So the younger students can just paint in the whole area without focusing on these little blobs, but the older students can focus on detail more. So once every student has their, whoops, their palette of paint all ready to go, and they've picked out one image to do, then they will begin painting. So as we paint, it's just like when we did Monet. She did a lot of dabbing technique, just like that. And she even layered color. So I can maybe even layer some of my blue into my green, just like the impressionist would dab and layer paint. So we wanna take what we took from Monet and add it into our Morisot lesson because they're both impressionists. So like I was saying, if you have younger students, they would just go into the flower, for example, and paint the whole thing in one solid color. They probably wouldn't think so much beyond just doing the whole thing in yellow, for example. But for your older students, they might want to 
add some other colors in there. So they're not limited to just doing these basic shapes. They can play around with it a little bit more and kind of dab around and see what they have. In addition to just using a straight up color, for example, just using blue, we can also add other colors to it. And this will mix a color and a texture, creating a new color and texture all at once. So I'm mixing blue and white, and now I have eggshells and pine needles all in the same paint. And that's really fun to experiment with. So your students will be mixing colors in the palette and then painting those colors as detailed or as simply as they're able to on their painting.